Saturday into the studios here at WDBO to take your questions on how to get to that retirement finish line. Not only do they take your questions on the phone, we have the text line up and running as well at 21232. So let's not waste any more time. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Kyle. Good morning. How are you guys today? We're doing great. Welcome back. We missed you last weekend. Yes, yes. I was, did a reasonably uh, good job, but... Uh... She's not quite Kyle. That's not what I hear. I heard that <laughs> you want her to fill in for me for now on. She did such a great job, you know. She did. Okay. She, well, that's I good. Didn't, I didn't, you know, I wanted to be fair. But yeah, yeah, she I did know, a great yes, job. Yes. yes. Well, that's good. I, I like to be in here. I that, only, only broadcast professionals here at WDBO. I try. No matter I, who sits in that chair, they're broadcast professionals. Yes, I try. All I, right. Everybody coming in here. Joe, what are we talking about today on the well, radio? Well, Rodney and I are here to answer your questions, things that might be on your mind regarding your personal finances. As our regular listeners know, this is the only financial call-in show here in Central Florida that's hosted exclusively by certified financial planner professionals. This is not a one-hour infomercial. We actually do take live calls because we are here to help you. And if you have questions regarding your personal finances, as they may revolve around questions about your IRA, about a 401k, about your mutual funds, about uh, reverse mortgages, about life insurance, about annuities, all that and more, we are here to take your questions. And as I say, on Monday through Friday, I and the 11 other certified financial planners, or I and the 10 other, if you include Rodney, certified financial planners at CFG do this for a fee. But on Saturday morning, we are here absolutely free. So we are your fiduciaries this morning, where we sit on your side of the table and give you straight answers and questions that might be on your mind. And we want to clear up those uh, misconceptions that you have out there. What do we call those, Kyle? The... Uh the uh, fallacies, no. no, the... Uh, well, we do factor fiction or Mythbusters. Mythbusters, yes. thank you. Oh, okay. I remember that. The Mythbusters. Mythbusters, How does yeah. that work? Well, I mean, all you got to do is dial us up at 844-220-0965. And basically, if you've heard anything over the years from your great-grandmother, your neighbor, your neighbor's second aunt's cousin, <laughs> that you're like, mm, you know, that sounds good, and I've been following that for the past five to ten years, but now I'm not so sure that that's credible information. Right, right. Just dial us up. Ask the question, and then we'll have the Mythbusters here, the we Certified here. Financial Group, basically decide, well, you know what? That's good advice. You know what? You need to run away from that advice as fast as you possibly can. That's what we're here to bust the myths. And by the way, we are on Facebook Live this morning, so if you ever wondered what it looked like behind the scenes here, you can take a peek right here in the studios and catch a glimpse of Rodney and me. So if you want to listen, you want to view, whatever you'd like to do, just go to your uh, Facebook page, type in Certified Financial Group, and up will pop the studio. And we take questions right off uh, the Facebook live as well. So tune in, dial in, whatever you want to do, and we are here to help you. All right. Topic of the day, gentlemen. Imposter scams have surpassed identity theft as the number one form of fraud. How about that? That's right. Um, I, I saw an article this past week and it talked about how this has now surpassed, you know, just typical identity fraud as, uh, you know, as a form of getting money from somebody. <laughs> um they're out there, aren't they? Yeah, and then, you know, typically in identity theft, you get access to somebody's social security number and you go open up instant credit in, you know, retail stores and you can run up ten or fifteen thousand dollars worth of fraud pretty quickly within a couple of days. Um but now the more prevalent scam is where people actually call you on the phone and they spoof a phone number. So the phone number says it looks like the IRS is calling or the Ocoee Police Department, and they actually ask for uh, a wire transfer or a uh, prepaid credit card um, to, to get money from people. Um, I know when th typically people, uh, several people I've uh, seen have uh, experienced where their computer locks up and it says, hey, your computer is infected. Call this number immediately to get it fixed. And when you call that number, they actually ask you for money. Oh, um, ransomware. Right. Wow. So what they've done is they've broken into your computer and they're holding your computer hostage and they want you to call and uh, send them Bitcoin or a, a money order, whatever it Wire might be. Transfer. Yes. And you're right about that, Rodney. Right now, they it's what you call spoofing, I guess, where you spoofing can... Spoofing is where you steal uh, yeah. a phone, you hijack a phone number. Right. So it looks like it look on caller like. ID, it looks like the IRS or Social Security Administration or whatever it might be. So it kind of looks legit and it catches you off guard and... There's a call from Social Security that says your Social Security number has been compromised or something, or you, we just want to confirm. So what is your Social Security number? Right. And exactly. bingo, they've got you. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's not a good thing. So you really need to be wary out there. Just a reminder that nobody ever calls for that information on the phone. Whether it's the IRS, whether it's the police department, they're going to show up the door or the, uh, or the Social Security, everything is going to be in mail form. Right. 
So do or ignore that stuff and, and stuff on the on the internet. They don't contact you by internet. So just emails. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But they could. But it's and these these scammers all over the world just do nothing twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, trying to get your money. But well, the, now the the recent one in Sri Lanka where all they do is call and uh, all you have to do is call back. All you got to do is call oh, the number yeah, back, that's right. and they charge you a hundred, yes. hundred fifty dollars oh, yes, just from yeah. calling the number. Yeah, yeah just right. for calling the number back, yeah. not even picking up, not even saying hello, just simply calling the number back. Call back. Yeah. So yeah, it's so a be scary careful world on your cell phone. All right, see, so we have a call here, yep. Kyle. Eight four four two two zero zero nine six five is the number to dial us up. Eight four four two two zero zero nine six five. Deborah. Oh, Deborah. Just lost. Deborah, Deborah just disappeared. Just I saw her question though. She had a yes. question. She just sold her home. That, and she wants to know what to do with the money. And she had a balloon payment on it, and they were coming together, and it's all done. But, yeah, pretty much. It's, it's all, all done. So now end. she has extra money. So, so this is your classic financial planning question, question that yeah. Rodney and I get all the time. Right, Rodney? That's right. Come into some money, and the first question we ask the client is what? What do you want to do with the money? What's, what's your time frame? What, what's, the, what's the plan? So some people want to buy another house right away, so that doesn't say you ought to invest it. But they come to us because they, they know we're in the investment business, but investing requires time, and that's definitely not what you want to do. So uh, investing is not what you want to do, but we can give you some guidance as to how you want to perhaps put in something safe so that you know it's there. Now, if it's for long term, then that's a whole different uh, whole different scenario. And if she's married, up to half a million in gain would be excluded from, from yeah, taxation that's, for, that's, for a lifetime. That's the important thing. So she didn't have to pay any taxes. Uh, you have to live there two out of five years. And you can, if you're married, filing a joint return, you can exclude half a million dollars of gain. In fact, I had a client in the office uh, last week, longstanding client. Mike, if you're listening out there, we're going to talk about you. But um, they are selling their home and they're moving to John Knox Village. And uh, he did came in and he did a little bit of uh, prep work for us. And this is, you know, the, I'm going to sell the house for and these are the taxes I'll have to pay when I sell the house. And he penciled in about $31,000 worth of taxes. Well, you should have seen the smile on his face when I told him he doesn't have any taxes to pay on the sale of the house. Because people still have that old carryover idea. Remember what you had to invest, right. the proceeds of the house? Uh, if you don't buy, you have some two to, years to, to buy. Yeah, so that's out the window, folks. As long as you're married, filing a joint return, and uh, you live in the house two out of five years, you're pri as your primary residence, you can avoid a half a million dollars in, in taxes. I see we have another call here, Kyle. Yeah, Brian in Orlando has dialed us up at 844-220-0965. Brian, go ahead. Good morning, Brian. Hey, Brian. hey morning, guys. How you guys doing? Good. What's up? Well, yeah, um, I got a so I got a question about my 401k. I've been contributing into it since December 2017. Uh, my employer brought it up to us, and um, you know they they sold us on the company match and everything, which I believe is four percent. Um, so my question is, are they like obligated to match your 401k or because, um, I've noticed they only contributed to the one month in 2017 and all my money is my, just my own vested balance. Everything I've put in, they, uh, haven't matched it yet. So I'm confused as to like how that works. Well, let's, let's back up here. Uh, you've been in the plan since 2017, uh, yeah, like December. Okay, and this is already 2019, and you haven't seen any match. I haven't seen any match. No, I get the uh, I get the statement like every three or four months. Okay, okay. It, it always shows just what I've put in. Okay, it could be what's called a discretionary match, which means that the employer has no obligation to put those funds in for you. Um, that does not affect your savings. That does not affect your your need to save for your retirement. Uh, some, it depends on the company's cash flow. So they're not necessarily cheating you. They're not taking anything out of your pocket, but it's what's called a discretionary match. Now, some of the things that you employers, uh, when they put in a, a match that you see on a regular basis is what's because what they, what they're doing is called a safe Harbor match where it allows the highly comp uh, folks to put in the maximum into their, uh, 401k plan. But just because they're not putting in anything for you doesn't mean anything is not kosher there, Brian. It no, no, of course. Um, yeah. and now, I had one more question, though. Um, yeah. The company I think we're investing into is called All American Funds. Okay, they're American, American funds. funds. Sure, American yeah. Funds, uh -huh, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you guys have any kind of, like, review on them? I mean, are they sure. okay? I, sure. I never really questioned sure. it. I just kind of just go with it. Sure. Uh, the American Funds family is a great fund family. Um 
they have different share classes, right, Rodney? You right. looked at that. How's that work? Different share classes. Well, typically they they have like an R designation on some of these retirement plan share classes, and it's actually a lo much lower expense ratio um, that's baked into the the funds that are using these plans. Right. So they run from anywhere from R1, I think, through an R6, R6. was the institutional class share. R5 is generally what we see in 401k plans because they are the least expensive. Now, it depends on how the expenses of running the plan are being covered. Um, if they're being covered purely from the fund expense ratio, which means that basically you're paying those fund expenses, you might be looking at what's called an R1 share, which is a 1%, 100 basis points. Uh, it's coming out of your funds. That's 1% per year to cover the expenses of running that plan. Doesn't necessarily make it a bad plan. And your question about whether or not uh, American funds are good funds, it's a great fund company. But like any fund companies, there's good funds and there's mediocre funds and there's poor funds within that fund family. So you need to pick out the best funds for your personal situation based on your risk tolerance and time horizon. If you want to shoot us uh, your, your lineup, uh, send that to Rodney on uh, Monday morning. Brian, uh, if you just contact Rodney, he can send you a secure link and you can send that back to us securely and we'll run some scores for you and tell you which at least are the best funds in your plan or yourself. Yeah, yeah, Brian, absolutely. we have a fiduciary. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Brian. email or a phone number. How do you want to be contacted? Contact me through email, Brian. It's rodney at financialgroup.com. Okay, cool. what, what's it's rodney at financialgroup.com. And what Rodney will do for you is run what we call okay. a fiduciary score. We'll score those funds on 11 distinct criteria and grade them out for you and show you which are the best in that group. Cool. I uh, appreciate you guys talking to me. All right, Thank Brian, you, that's why we're here. Thanks for the call. Thanks, yeah, Brian. If you want to talk to the group as well, 844-220-0965. That's 844-220-0965. We got Deborah back on the line. Deborah, Deborah you're Deborah. back. Hi, Deborah. You, you are back, Deborah, but uh, we got to make it quick. We got another, we got three minutes left, so we'll start your question and finish it up on the other side. Go ahead, Deborah. Okay. All right. Here's what happened. We have been paying on our mortgage 2000 a month. And we have now paid off the entire funding. Congratulations. Oh, nice. What our house that we have sold is what it is. Not on we now live where we're paying another two thousand and that house sold. So what should we do at almost age seventy when we have three hundred thousand coming in in a bundle? Should we pay off this house we're now paying on? Possibly, yes. How much do you owe on that house? Two hundred and eighty. Oh, two hundred. Wow. And you have three hundred. Well, now let me. Right. You know what? The, the real way to answer that question is, and most people, not most people, but a lot of people, have the mentality that we ought to pay off the house and move on down the highway. Right, Rodney? Right. right. And there's pros and cons to that. What do you think the pros are, Deborah? I think the pros are we would not have anything to have to worry about. The house would be paid off. However. We only have probably 10 good years of living left is what I tell my husband. And I don't know if it's, we don't have any dependents. We have no children. Okay. So I'm not sure. So what? We leave a house paid off for, for who? Right. Bingo. Now you're thinking. So okay. here's what this begs, Deborah. And um, as certified financial planners, this is what we do for our clients day in and day out, is we take a deep dive in your own personal situation. We look at what it is you and your husband want to accomplish how much you want to spend, what your obligations are, what your current mortgage payment is, what your assets are, and then show you what you can reasonably spend every year for the rest of your life and still have a high probability of having money left when you're 95 years old. And that requires right. planning. Um, the question that you're asking is a basic fundamental financial planning question and should be answered by a certified financial planner practitioner, not somebody that's just going to uh, sell, trying to sell you something and say, put the money here and you're going to be okay. We'd love to work with you, Deborah. That's what uh, Rodney and I and the 10 other certified financial planners at CFG do day in and day out. And we'd love to, uh, love to work with you, have you come by at least for a complimentary consultation. There's no charge for it. And we could tell you what we do and we tell you what our modest fee is to answer that question specifically. But you're about to embark on that long road that we call retirement and you want to be right. sure that you've got enough gas in the tank to be able to do what you want to do for the rest of your life and not make any fatal mistakes. So good okay. for you that you've got this capital and uh, you've got some flexibility and you've got health that you can do what you want to do. The question is now, how do you manage this money so you can do what you and your husband want to do? And the nice thing about your situation is, well, for your own personal situation is you've got no dependents. You've got nobody to yeah. worry about when you're gone. You don't have to worry about leaving a legacy for 
children and grandchildren. You have a dog you want to leave the money to, Deborah? Or something? Don't even have a dog. Don't even have a dog. <laughs> All right. Well, we encourage you to give us a call. That's what we do. We're up in Altamont Springs. We've been doing this now for nearly 40 years, and we'd be glad to work with you. Right. So give us a call on Monday morning at 407 869 9800, or you can reach us at 1 800 execute as if you're executing a legal document, or just go to our website. That's financialgroup.com, financialgroup.com, and give Rodney a call on Monday morning, and he'll be glad to sit down with you and, and go over the options and tell you what exactly what we could do for you. Okay? Great. Thanks so much. All right, Deborah, thanks, thanks, thanks for the Deborah. call. Hmm? All righty, Deborah, if you want Deborah's line, it's 844 220 0965. That is 844-220-0965. Text machine's up and running as well at 21232. That is 21232. We will continue to take your calls with the Certified Financial Group and plan tomorrow. Today. Right here on News 96.5 WDBO. Now. Up in June. Healthcare is, is June 22nd. June right? 22nd. Options and retirement. I don't know if he's filled up in that one yet, but I know that's a, uh, that's a, that's a biggie because that's the one where you... Uh, People that turn 65, their mailbox explodes with all these Medicare options, and it's mm. as confusing as can be, and Gary sorts through all that. Lots of decisions. Lots of decisions. You have to, part yeah. A, Part B, Part, part C, Part D, Part Q, Part R, Part R, S, T, L, and E. Yes, right. yes, yeah, yes, you know. yes. So he'll walk you all through that. There's, he's not selling you anything. He's giving you good information. And people ask, you say, Joe, why do you guys put on these workshops? We do it for basically two reasons. Well, number one, to prevent you from becoming a financial casualty in your later years and give you good information. And secondly, to introduce you to what we do as a firm, how we work with our clients for a fee, how we act as fiduciaries, work on your behalf in solving those financial questions. So whether you need financial planning or investment management now or sometime in the future, perhaps you give us an opportunity to earn your business. So go to our website, that's financialgroup.com financialgroup.com. Click on events and you can make your reservation right there online. All right, time for the news. Here's Dave Wall. This is News 96. Point. For more information on how we do that, you can go to our, fin our website, financialgroup.com, financialgroup.com. All right, we get some busy phone lines. Here. Busy phone right. lines. Here we are. Right Let's back do to it. it. Talk to Stephanie in Palm Bay. Stephanie, you're Stephanie. up first. Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. Good morning. Hey there. What's up? Hey, uh, my son just got hired by a lawn, you know, company okay. that his friend started. They're teenagers. Okay. And his friend does not want to pay him as an employee. Sure. He just wants to pay him either under the table or, Ooh. you know, yeah. something like that. Sure. So <laughs> I'm just wondering, you know, should my son demand no, he a... You know, you know uh, to be an employee well, or like a 1099, I don't want me to get penalized for not yeah. paying taxes or quarterly well, taxes. Yeah. So I'm just looking for a little focus. Well, first of all, we have to face reality. you got a couple of teenagers here. Your son can demand all he wants, and his friend will probably tell him, go be a lifeguard find or somebody else. Right, right. right. Yeah. So let's face reality. He's going to get paid in cash, all right? Okay. And your son needs to recognize that as income and file what's called a Schedule C as self-employed. And recognize okay. you can have to pay taxes on that, including self-employment tax. Now, depending on what his overall income is, he may not owe any tax. So let, okay. that, let that not scare him. But if he wants to be able to sleep at night and do it the right way and teach him the right way right from the get-go, not to right, cheat Uncle right. Sam. Because if he cheats Uncle Sam, he's cheating all of us. And that's, yeah. not, that's mm -hmm. not a good thing to do. So I, I commend you, Stephanie, for being an upright yeah. mom and trying to get him on the right way. <laughs> Okay, so a Schedule C, you Schedule said? C, I follow a Schedule C as self-employed, and he'll recognize his income there, and he can take okay. any deductions. Probably won't have many deductions for what he's doing, but uh, that'll right. guide him through it, and it'll be a good lesson for him as well. Right. And that's not, so uncom that that's not uncommon in that industry, mm -hmm. believe me. And there's a lot okay. of folks, you know, it's just one of the reasons. I, I'm a strong favor of uh, what's called the fair tax. Are you familiar with that? Mm -hmm. National sales tax? Yeah, anybody, anybody have any idea how many billions of dollars are cash transactions, barter transactions that are not reported? If all, you know, if there was a way to capture that through a national sales tax and eliminate the income tax, mm -hmm. we'd be so much further ahead because all that, that's just growing, I think. Yeah, anyway, that's, I can get a soapbox tax on, on consumption, that. right? Consumption tax, you got it. Stephanie, thank you for the call. That sounds like a Joe Burt podcast idea. Well, well Joe, Thir Joe Burt thinks <laughs> about the fair tax. I listened to that for a while, yeah. Yeah, there yeah. you go. <laughs> so there's your idea for the day. Oh, right, you got it. Thank you. 844-220-0965, 844-220-0965. Talk to Gail in Melbourne's up next. Hi, Gail. Hey, Gail. Hi, how are you? Good, what's up? 
my son is 37 and he's talking about taking money out of a 401k to put a down payment on a house. Is he going to be penalized for anything? Uh, depends on how he takes it out. Uh, if, he okay. ta if he makes a withdrawal, okay, he will have to pay taxes and a 10% penalty. And that's, okay. and that's very expensive money. Okay. All right. He may be able to borrow from his 401k. Oh, okay. Now, if he does that, he's borrowing from himself. He can take out the okay. lesser of $50,000 or one half of his, what's called his vested balance. And, mm -hmm. he's, and he's paying himself back through paycheck. So he's being. They'll extract that from his paycheck. And they'll extract it from his paycheck. Yes. And the, oh. the, other, the other thing there is that. That he'll be paying it back after tax. He'll be paying it back in after tax dollars. Right. It'd be so, just like paying, it'd be just like paying on a credit card, but he's paying himself back. So it's he's being his okay. own credit card. Now, here's the downside to that. If he leaves the job and hasn't paid back the money that he borrowed, then that'll be income to him and he'll have to pay taxes okay. and the penalty at that time. So oh, good Lord. Or yeah. he has to borrow it from somewhere else to, right. to pay it back yeah, to exactly. his four hundred one K. Yeah, put it on a credit card right. to, put it, to put it in four hundred one K. Yeah. All righty. So you want to Thank be careful. You. You're welcome, Gail. Thanks, Gail. You know, we see that a lot, right, Rowdy, where people want to use, they right. see that big pot of money in there, right. and they say, well, I could do this or that, do that, but they don't realize they're going to lose 20, 25 plus percent when they take it out. And if you told them they're, I'm going to lose 25% of my money overnight, they well, I don't want to do that. Right. And well, you know, it, it's also, too, I had a neighbor say, well, that, that's what my brother did. He took it out of their 401k. And I said, wait, did they take it out or did they do a loan? There's two big differences. Big, a lot, a lot difference. of people don't realize there's the difference because right. right. they're hearing their neighbor, their friend going, "Oh, that's how we did it." I got to do it too. That's the Mythbusters. And there's your there, there you there's your Mythbuster for today. And if the loan sizable, it drains your cash flow because you're pulling yeah. that out of your, every paycheck to pay it back. Yes, yes. So you got to be careful. Got to yeah. be careful. There, there is a difference. There's a that's difference. What you got to right. check in. Gene in Orlando's up next. Gene, go ahead. You're on with the Certified Financial Group. Hello, Gene. Hi, Good Gene. morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm a 82, 83 year old Caucasian male. Lived in my house 62 years, and I'm in financial trouble so bad I, I don't even know where to turn. Oh. Reverse mortgage people tell me that I don't make enough money to qualify because of my debt ratio. Yeah. And I need a roof on my house in the worst way. And I'm, I can't find anybody like FEMA or anybody else that might be willing to help. So I don't know where to turn. Boy, Gene, that's a tough one. Um... And you're heavily in debt, you say? Well, you know, I, I pay my bills. I've never been late making a payment in my okay. life. Okay. Um, but so I struggle to do that sometimes. Okay, so I, I, rent a, I rent a few rooms in my house in an effort to uh, okay. make those payments. Okay. But then they don't pay me. So what do you do? Oh, well, oh that's not good either. Well, so the first thing well, is, is get better tenants because that'll help your cash yes. flow. Yeah. I mean, that's your source of income. So if I was going to tell you what to do immediately, I would say throw the bums out and get some tenants that'll pay the bills. How do, how do you do that without having to go and pay a fee to get them out? Um, that's a legal question, Gene. I'll tell you what, you need to call Tom Olson. What time's Tom Olson on? 11 o'clock? He's on at 11, but... Give uh, Tom Olson a call. Office. That's a legal question, and that's the first thing you need to look at, Gene. You're, you're between a rock and a hard place and your source of income there is you're the rooms that you're renting, but unfortunately you're not getting any income. Tenants aren't dependable. Tenants well, aren't my income is Social Security. I right. get $1,400 yeah. $1, a month. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. I understand, your, Gene, my heart bleeds for you, my friend. Um, are you a veteran? I am. Have you I checked, was. Have well, you checked in the VA of any kind of benefits that have, that's available to you? Well, you know, they keep throwing out this this debt to income ratio. No, no, okay? I'm, no, no, no. The VA benefits have nothing to do with your debt to income. I'll tell you what, Gene. Do, do me a favor. Uh, call okay. me on call me on Monday morning, and uh, let me see if I can direct you in the right way. My heart bleeds for you. Uh, I understand your situation. This is not uncommon today. Um, I want to help you out. So please call me to, uh, Monday morning at four zero seven. 869-9800, 407-869-9800. I wish you well, my friend, and thanks for the call. 9800. Right, you got it. Perfect. Okay, guy. I, and, and, okay, I will. Thank you. Thank you, Gene. Thanks, Gene. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Gene. Appreciate thanks for your it. service, too. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, uh, Tom Olson's office, uh, Rob Solomon is also a good, in Tom Olson's office, is a good resource to help that with landlord-tenant question. And, good. 
Uh, we'll give out his uh, Gene, hang on the line. I'll give you his number in just a moment. 844-220-0965 is the number to dial us up. 844-220-0965. We also have a text question here. Uh, Go ahead. We have two of them. Get a little sorry about there. that. That's all right. No, I got it. Nobody heard that. <laughs> You're no only mortgage. Human. I hear fourteen hundred dollars a month. I have three hundred sixty k on retirement. How much should be on cash? Can it last for thirty five years? It depends. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say. <laughs> what are the variables that have to be looked at, Rodney? Well, it just there's lots of them. I mean, uh, the the return. We have to build assumptions around the return that they're going to get on that three hundred sixty thousand. Um, I would say, in general terms, uh, if it was invested fifty percent in stocks, fifty percent in fixed income, bonds, um, then you could sustain a 4% withdrawal rate um, for 25 years. So that's sort of a general rule um, around this, this scenario. And that withdrawal rate of 1400 a month uh, equates to 4.6% per year. So it's a, little, it's a little heavy relative to the 4% that we'd want. Um, yeah, the key there is, is um, of course, what we call sequence of returns. If you start withdrawing, in a decreasing, declining market, you'll be eating in your principal quicker. So there's right. a lot of variables involved there. And you don't tell us how old how old you are, so we don't know how long it needs to last. And you say you need $1,400 a month, but we want to be sure that uh, we've got all the bases covered. Um, and that's this, once again, begs, begs planning, right, Rodney? Yeah, it gets to your point before about, you know, building a plan to, to assess all the variables in this particular situation. Right. When we do planning, the first thing we look at is, okay, we know what we need. We think we know what we need, but we're going to double check that. So we give you what we call our living expense form. That's a detailed look at all the places your money would go. We're not, we don't care where you spend it, how you spend it, what you do. We're not here to criticize, but we want to be sure that you can maintain your lifestyle so you're not eating cat food tacos when you're 90 years old. Cat food tacos. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the point of last resort, okay? Okay. So we, don't, we want to be sure that you're going to be okay, and we want to be sure what your expenses are, and we factor in inflation, factor in taxes, factor in Social Security, and then we look at how conservatively you can invest your money and still have a high probability of not running out of money in your 90s. And we stress test it using a Monte, what's called a Monte Carlo simulation and tell you what you need to do. So this is common stuff. This is what we do day in and day out as certified financial planners. And as I usually say in my opening monologue, this is the stuff they don't teach you in school. And this is why, unfortunately, we have more and more people having financial difficulties in their later years because they're not making making the right decisions because they were never taught. In fact, I had, uh, coincidentally, on Thursday, I had two uh, lovely folks in my office, first-time visitors. He was a retired engineer from one of the major firms here in town, and she was a math teacher, advanced math. And the first thing they... They, they were kind of sheepish about, sheepish about, sheepish about sheepish. this, as they, they, and they were kind of embarrassed. They said, you know, math, we can do this inside and out, but we don't understand this stuff. Yeah. And this is not uncommon. I mean, this is what we see day in and day out. Even from chief executive officers of corporations, you know, they understand their business, but they don't understand what we do. It's like trying to self-medicate and take the place of your doctor. So, folks... If you want financial planning, this is what we do with 12 certified financial planners under one roof. That's what we do. We are certified financial planner professionals. Our firm goes back 40 years. We'd be glad to work with you. Give us a call, 407-869-9800, or go to our website, financialgroup.com, and you can learn all about us. You make an appointment right online. We'll offer you a complimentary consultation, and we'll tell you what we do. Yep, and we have some plenty of phone lines available for you to dial us up at 844-220-0965. That is 844-220-0965. So got some time to answer your question. Also, your text questions as well, 21232. We just asked you to keep it about 160 characters because that's all we can see on our screen. And um, you know, we've got a text question in right now that got cut off. So hopefully uh, I, I sent the texter a note, hopefully that uh, she can get the rest of her question answered. Uh, so we'll ask it on the other side. Right now we pause to get the three big things you need to know. No, no. Whether you want to save for retirement, leave a legacy for your family, or simply gain funds, so, but you won't pay taxes on it until you withdraw it. And you could roll that into an IRA, and you still don't still pay, won't taxes pay taxes until you withdraw it. 
Okay. So that's the short answer. But thanks for the call and thanks for doing the Facebook stuff. And the text question in 21232. Uh, my name is Christy. Hi, Christy. My question is about 401k. I am 36. I know very little about a 401k. However, when I was 20, my boss convinced me to sign up and my dad. And that's why we asked you to keep it to about 160 characters. So I think, uh, well, we asked her to follow up and I think she's lost contact with the 401k. How can she find it? Well, first of all, kudos to the boss. He he got her to invest when she was 20 yep. years old. Yep, yep. That's that's great. That's 16 years worth of interest right. we're working on right exactly. now. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but in, in terms of, it sounds like she's lost track of it, right? Maybe the yes. company went out of business. If she could find an old statement, perhaps, and contact the custodian, uh, might be a good place to start. Would she contact the company? or if she, well, So when you, if she finds there, the old statement, what is she looking for? There will be a... There would be a website on there. Okay. Or at least a phone number. A, a contact phone number, phone number right. probably both. Right. Um, and she could use that at least as a starting point. Yeah. Contact the company if they're still in business. And if not, as Rodney says, find a statement and look for a phone number. Or the, the next place is, the last place is, go to the state of Florida because uh, that account may have been uh, abandoned and is now in the, what they call the Florida treasure chest. Unclaimed property. Unclaimed property, and Unclaimed you may be able to find it. Yeah, have you ever looked in that? No, I, I, I meant to do that one day. I have found hundreds of dollars for myself. There. Hundreds of hundreds, dollars? Hundreds of dollars, yes. Wow. Yeah. So I'll, so what, what's the website? Uh, you know, I don't know off the top of my head. I think if you, I if you, I think if you Google Florida, Florida Treasure Chest, uh, yeah. they'll give you the website. Or even Florida Unclaimed Property. It'll Florida Unclaimed up. Property. And be careful because there are websites there that will say they will do this search for you and they want to charge you for it. Forget that. You can do it on your own. You can't. So yes, you if it I, it's not worth paying no, somebody. No, no, no. It's Florida Treasure Hunt, oh, yeah. fltreasurehunt.gov. Yep. Yes, I, I just went to Google it because when yeah, we go to break here, I'm totally searching my name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> FL Treasure Hunt. FL Treasure Hunt. Dot gov. Dot gov. Dot gov. Dot gov. 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 Yes. There you go. Yes. Uh, at least I'm going to think it's of dot org. Dot org. Oh, it's dot org. Dot org. You sure? Okay. Well, yes. Yeah, I'm at the wrong website. Yeah. All right, then it's .org. I apologize. That's FloridaTreasureHunt.org. Right. If that doesn't work, try .gov. Actually, it looks like the same website. <laughs> uh, okay. It's the same thing. Stay so away. whether okay. you go to org or gov, it yeah. looks like Stay away from point. .com because they'll probably want to charge you on the .com. Right. Yeah, yeah, if it's $25 to do the that. search, you are at the, wrong You're at the wrong website. Place. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Well, we got about a minute and a half left here, uh, gentlemen. So uh, yeah, Let's we, recap the workshops that are coming up. Workshops Go ahead, Rodney. Okay, we June twenty second, healthcare options in retirement, and those are they're all on Saturday, and they're from from nine to eleven in the morning, and then July twentieth we have countdown to retirement, and then on August twenty fourth we have key elements of a successful financial plan, and all those are absolutely free. We hold them in our offices up in Eltamont Springs. Leave your checkbook at home. We'd be glad to give you some good information, but you have to make a reservation. So you can go to our website. That's financialgroup.com, financialgroup.com. Click on events and you can learn more about them. And you can also learn more about us, how we have been helping families uh, in Central Florida now for nearly 40 years and uh, how we do financial planning for a fee. We work with our clients as fiduciaries and you will work with a certified financial planner professional, not somebody who may have been a car salesman yesterday and today is a financial planner because there are some of those folks, unfortunately, out there that give our profession not such a good name. So we're proud to be certified financial planner professionals, and we'd be proud to work with you. So give us a call, 407-869-9800. And we'll be back here next Saturday. We will continue to plan tomorrow. Today. Right here on News 96.5 WDBO. Information presented on this program is believed to be factual and up-to-date, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, and it should not be regarded as a complete analysis of the subjects discussed. Discussions and answers to questions do not involve the rendering of personalized investment advice, but is limited to the dissemination of general information. A professional advisor should be consulted before implementing any of the options presented. Certified Advisory Corp. is registered as an investment advisor.